Welcome back to Hours Mice, guys, and today we are going to transform the look of this stair railing for under 100 bucks. Welcome back, guys. I'm just another Hours Mike, and like I said, today we will be uh, redoing the stair rail. Uh, if you haven't seen in previous videos, it was in the kitchen uh, remodel uh, series. Uh, we redid the floors in this foyer, and unfortunately now, uh, this the look is just outdated, but uh, this uh, stair rail it, it does not match the floor, as you can see down here. Uh, yeah, it doesn't match, and, and there's a dog. So, uh, so what we're gonna do, the plan is here to uh, go ahead. We're gonna uh, prep this sterile and the posts for stain and some uh, polyurethane. And then we will be uh, also prepping these guys and the base here, the spindles in the base for some white paint. In the spots where the sterile gets the most uh, use, like right here, when you turn around, you kind of grab this handle uh, up there as well. Uh, they get pretty dirty. So uh, as you can see, I already started with this Scotch-Brite pad. Um, it is sanding it a little bit, but it's also uh, cleaning up that dirt. Today, we're gonna focus on uh, this, the rail and the posts are getting stained. So we're gonna kind of clean these off with uh, this pad and then uh, we'll just do maybe a light sanding. I'm not quite sure. We'll see. This actually is doing a pretty good job of kind of prepping it. I think we could probably get away with just using this, but um, we might go back with like a 600 grit just to kind of give the stain a little bit more to get into the wood, kind of kind of get rid of the uh, gloss of this finish right here. Otherwise, the stain won't be able to penetrate into the wood. So uh, let's get started by uh, taking care of this railing and the posts and then we'll come in with the stain and uh, see what it looks like. All right, so we went through and used the scotch pad. Um, some of these areas, this was not one of them, but some of these had some really, really built up just over the years. You know, people go around the corner, grab this, and you know, oils and dirt and whatever just cake on uh, along with like right around this area. Uh, same down there, you kind of swing around. Uh, wherever you touch all the time, like it's gonna have some, so you gotta make sure you get all that off. That's what the Scotch Bright pad was for. Uh, we are gonna go back and use, I decided to actually use uh, 120 grit paper instead of 600. After I thought about it, 600 is way too, uh, way too fine to do what I wanted to do. One of the things that you'd want to do uh, before you obviously do all this is to fill any holes that you have. So uh, one, for instance, for us, we had a gate right here uh, that was mounted to these posts and there's holes left over. We don't want the gate anymore. So um, we're gonna use some wood filler here. And I kind of color, I used the color match kind, stainable too. And just to kind of match what's here already, that way when we stain it, you got a better shot of it matching and not seeing the hole. So we had those holes, we have holes here for that gate as well. We also have uh, the mounting holes, as you can see kind of along the bottom here. I was gonna wait to do these posts, but you know what? I got everything here. I might as well just sand it and then before we paint it, we'll wipe everything down um, when that time comes. We're still only gonna do 
uh, the top rail and the main posts first. But it's okay if you get the stain on these posts because they're getting painted white, but it's not, you know, so there's less taping that you would have to do uh, with all that. So um, that's why we're gonna do the stain first. All right, so let's use um, a putty knife. I got a new putty knife here, some wood filler, fill these holes, and then we'll go through with the 120 and stain that. All right, so we have our gloves on. We have our gel stain here. We went with the aged oak. Uh, just wanted to get something that had a little less, I call it orangey look to it. Um, this, this looked like it was the closest match to our floors. Um, obviously, we'll gauge each coat to see how dark we'd want it to be. But ultimately, we take uh, our foam brush here and uh, a uh, old t-shirt and we're gonna try to work this stuff into that uh, junk or into the railings and see how it turns out uh, you do want to make sure that especially with the gel stain you want to make sure you stir it very well because it's not like even stain itself you would have to normal stain or oil based stain uh, you would have to uh, stir it as well, but this stuff is a lot thicker. Uh, it's more like uh, a paintish type consistency. So you want to make sure that you start pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this and then we'll go into the other room. Uh, I already wiped down everything and it's all ready to go. We taped off uh, the walls and, and the floor. So uh, we should be good to go with this. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, first coat done. Uh, it actually sat for, I suppose to sit for eight to 10 hours. This is the next day. Uh, it's a tidbit darker than what it used to be. Uh, definitely, definitely is darker. I don't know if you can tell on camera and the lighting's kind of bad too, but uh, basically uh, I think what we've come to the realization is that we're not gonna be able to match the floor and maybe even don't want to match the floor uh, and that is because this finish that I had on before had a little bit of an orangey tint to it. I, I call it orangey, I, I don't know, but it's definitely, you're not gonna be able to, unless you completely strip this stuff down to d its natural wood, it's not gonna be able to get to the point where we were looking initially at the floor, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. 
And I say that because uh, some of these, some of the accent colors in this, in the house are darker wood. Just like we did the cabinets in the kitchen. That was a dark wood with this floor. Uh, our door is going to be a dark wood, uh, is a dark wood with this floor. Our dining room is also dark wood with this floor. So I think the next best thing, if not the best thing, is to uh, darken this up. And how we're gonna do that, obviously the same stain that we have, we're going to just keep applying coats until we achieve the color, the darkness that we want. So that's our goal for now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a second coat and a third coat and however many coats I need to get to a, a nice dark colored wood. Uh, and then we'll call it quits and put some polyurethane on it. But each coat is eight to 10 hours uh, of dry time before you apply anything else. So uh, we'll go ahead and put the uh, coat on tonight and we'll keep applying coats until uh, until we're done. And then I'll catch up with you guys then. So, so you've seen enough of me staining. Uh, I'm not gonna make you watch again. I'm just gonna do a little bit of YouTube magic, as they say, and uh, we'll be dark. Okay, and a week later, this is what we have. As you can see, I already taped up what I needed to get these spindles painted. But as you can see, we are a lot darker and just to give you an idea of what we wear and what we are now uh, pretty pretty big difference kind of hard to tell because everything uh, it's not completely done but um, we do have to put some polyurethane on here but I decided to go ahead with the white first and then go back with the polyurethane because uh, we don't really have to touch the bottom of the rail with the polyurethane and I didn't want to. It took, these, the staining steps are, you know, every like 12, eight to 12 hours, eight to 10 hours uh, to let it dry before you put the next coat on and with schedules and stuff. So it took about a week to get it to this point. To give you an idea, um, the Minwax that we used before, uh, it, it, it was an aged oak and we got two coats on and we were nowhere near where we wanted to be. It was a little watery too, but compared to what we ended up going with, we ended up picking up this Kona gel stain from, was it Varathene? And we coming from this gel stain from Minwax. Uh, this, this gel stain seemed to go on a lot better. Uh, it was a lot thicker. Uh, not as watery as this one was. This one you can definitely see streaks. This one laid down almost like a paint, uh, which is kind of what I was expecting. And then obviously you wipe it off at the same time, uh, you know, three to five minutes after you put it on. Um, this was just, it just wasn't cutting it. I don't know if it was the color or the actual stain. Uh, both were mixed very well. I made sure I mixed both of them very well, so I had nothing to do with that. But anyway, this is the, Power thing that we're going to use kind of match this perfect and uh, just it's a clear gloss as opposed to like a matte finish or semi gloss. So, why don't we get to painting? Uh, we'll go back to what we had. The this is going to be the final coats, uh, just Sherman Williams interior, exterior, high gloss, extra white. Um, but I have the primer and the sealer inside. This is the primer and sealer that we're gonna be using. Um, this will be the first coat and then we'll go with the high gloss, uh, water-based uh, final final coat, final two coats possibly, we'll see. But uh, as you can see, I already kinda got a little bit ahead and this will be the first coat of that primer sealer. Uh, we just wanted to see the contrast here, what it looked like uh, going against the new uh, railing. So it looks pretty good. So we decided to stop with the stain and go ahead with the the white part of the project. So uh, let's go ahead and get some uh, rails painted.
Look at what we've done. Look how awesome this is. It is a complete transformation of what it used to be. It definitely goes with the rest of the house, the rest of this area uh, with the darker wood, white. It just looks a lot more modern. And it, I, I can't, honestly, I can't be happier with it. We are not completely done. Uh, we still have to do the polyurethane, uh, but we still have a sheen to it right now, and, and it looks it looks good. It looks really good. So uh, just to give you an update, um, we did do one coat of primer and ended up doing three coats of the uh, white water-based Sherman Williams, and it took for ever. Uh, I am so happy that I'm done painting. Uh, I, I, I always like the idea of painting, but uh, when I actually start doing it, I remember that I can't stand it. And uh, yeah, so uh, you would think that this wouldn't take this long. And honestly, the reason why you're not getting, it's been three weeks or so straight, which I usually post a video, at least of my videos, um, one, once a week. Uh, and this has just been consuming the time to where I couldn't really, I just wanted to finish this and couldn't work on anything else to give you guys content. So um, this has taken about three weeks to do. Uh, and that's been mostly at night. Uh, once the kids go to bed, cause kids, they run up the stairs, they grab stuff and they end up with paint in their hands or stain on their hands. And they ask me how I know, cause it happened and you know, this, it, it, it just took forever. Don't think this looks like an easy job to do. You'll knock it out in a weekend. You literally can't because if you're staining, staining has to dry and it has to dry eight to 10 hours. Like I said earlier in the video, the paint, by the time you, I, I think there was one time I painted the whole thing once, like all one shot. And after that, I was just, if you don't mind painting and you look, but it's just every nook and cranny of the rail of the posts, it's just, and then you have to paint one side and then turn around and paint the other side and make sure there's no runs. And, and there are a couple spots uh, where there's a little bit of a run, but you know what? I, I'm just, I'm just so tired of painting that I don't really care. Um, and, and we can address those later. But yeah, it, it just, I am, I am thrilled with how this, how this turned out. So one thing I would do a little bit differently, uh, I probably would have, if I knew it was going to take four coats to cover uh, these posts and the base, uh, I probably would have did two coats of primer, just, just, just so you guys know. Um, two coats of primer and then two coats of the base, probably would have been better off that way, uh, just to give it more of an adhesion to the wood. Um, and the fact that it took so long, uh, I had it all masked off. And as you, if you've ever painted anything, um, walls or where you would tape something off with that kind of paint, like a, a wall paint or water-based paint, latex paint, um, the paint dries, the tape tends to peel it up a little bit. So we had to go around with a knife, a razor blade and just kind of score all around each post where it meets the railing uh, just so it wouldn't peel up a little bit. And there was a little bit of that. Um, if if you're somebody who, well, I know where all the issues are. Um, somebody who just walks in would never even uh, think to even look for it rather than, it's nothing's glaring uh, issue. Just, you know, there's just some things and that's with every project, right? So, um, but if you don't want to spend the time on this, um, you, you're better off paying somebody or, you know, just replacing it. But, uh, for again, I think we're, I think we're under a hundred dollars between the two gallons and you don't need a gallon. Um, I think I used maybe a quarter of the gallon um of the actual paint and very very little of the primer i would have split it in half uh so if your project's about this side you probably could get away with a quart of each 
instead of a whole gallon if they actually make that in that size i'm not quite sure but um either way definitely if you'd want that way it would be under a hundred dollars and it just completely changed the look of of the room it really did um so let's go ahead and start working on the polyurethane and one thing also with the tape um it, there were a couple of little spots where uh there were a couple of little spots that were um you know the tape kind of messed with the stain a little bit um i do have this this it's really just a marker but it came with the cabinets for the kitchen uh if you haven't seen the kitchen rebuild uh, that's a whole series i encourage you to go look at it uh it's something that i did uh all by myself for the most part and again you could do it as well uh with minimal amount of tools needed but uh this marker actually matches very well to the color we ended up with the stain so there were a couple spots i wanted to touch before i uh polyurethane and i actually did that on some yeah let's jump to uh hitting the polyurethane up we will coat it probably i'll check but once or uh, probably two times i probably need two coats of polyurethane uh to get it where i want it it's a it's a gloss polyurethane so uh it should help out um make this look even better so all right let's get to work you guys may want to uh tape a little better than i did i always think i'm this neat person uh, when it comes to painting or staining and then I realized that I'm not uh, but it is really hard with the rag we ended up we ended up using a rag it is very hard to uh, keep the big rag from kind of messing so we're, we're gonna have to touch this up here and over there as well uh, eh, is what it is there we have it we got two coats of the polyurethane on here and it is looking perfect um, the only finishing touches I did do is a little touch up on the walls with the tan color which we'll do that off camera um, but overall uh, definitely something you could do it just takes a lot more time than what uh, you would probably expect it to especially if you're doing a color change on the on the post and whatnot but yeah this job is complete so this video is getting kind of long so i'm going to run through this real quick if you have not subscribed uh, to this channel please consider subscribing and get awesome content like this uh, also we have a merch store if you want to go check that out that is at uh, teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash average mic link is below in the description uh give give the video a thumbs up a like if you liked what you saw thumbs down comment below um yeah all that good stuff so until then i will catch you guys on the next one later